For this lesson on Robert Indiana's words, you'll need a square piece of paper. It's easy to cut a piece of paper into a square. You can measure it or you can fold the corner in and make a triangle. My paper is already square, so the first thing I do is divide it into four. I'm using my ruler to measure it. My page is 26 by 26 centimetres, so when I divide it into quarters, I measure 13 centimetres across and 13 centimetres the other way so that I can join the lines and have nice even quarters. I'm looking at Robert Indiana's alphabet, which is in the lesson plan to do my letters. So I have to remember all of these things. He has very straight lines. There are some parts of the letters that are thinner and some that are thicker. I need to make sure that I have the serifs, the little long bits at the bottoms and the flicks of the letters just right. And then if you look closely at his artwork, all of the letters sort of merge together. So even though there's one in each quarter and they're very definite sizes, at the end of it all, they need to be touching and I'm going to erase those lines in between the letters. So you can see me doing this now. I'm making all my letters fit so that they are just touching. I've got my watercolours ready and I'm going to start painting and I'm choosing big bright contrasts like he has. So the three colours I've chosen are yellow and blue, which are complementary colours, and I've added this dark pinky red in too. So I'm using this for my letters and if you watch me switch between brushes, the green one is a detail brush, which means I'm doing sharp edges and making sure it looks super neat. Once I've done the edges, I pick up the other brush, which has got a much wider base, and I fill in the space. So you'll see the large bits of colour suddenly seem to be done much faster. You can pause the video if you want to see it. So details, and then I will pick up a large brush and fill in some space. There I go. You can see I'm doing one colour at a time and I'm working kind of down the page so that I have some areas that are going to be dry so that I can come back and paint next to them. When you want something to be this clean and this clear, you have to be very careful about not working your watercolours next to one another. And you can see here I am going with my yellow and I'm only painting where it's super dry. Now he's chosen what seems to me to be random spaces. Some are gonna be yellow and some are gonna be blue. So I've decided to do the same thing with mine. I'm working the same way I did inside the letters with um, a small brush for the edges, just to keep it really neat. And then bringing in a larger brush to fill in the spaces so that I don't spend forever on it. So finishing touches now. I'm just going into these last spaces, making sure that my colors are really bright and separate from each other. So I get that good contrasty look like you see in so many of Robert Indiana's works. I'd love to be able to make this into a sculpture, but I think that might be for another day. So, finishing off with the bright colours, and you can see what I've chosen to write. It's fun picking your four-letter words. <laughs> Enjoy, everyone.